Uh, welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining this talk. We know that this is the last day, almost the last session, so we really appreciate that you have come to this talk. So my name is Roberto. I'm a software engineer in the ARM ecosystem. Um, and today, uh, we will share the talk with uh, Rafael Ferrari, which is the CEO and founder of Schoolfish Studios in Brazil. So let's give him a well, uh, warm welcome. <laughs> so this is the plan for the talk. I will go through uh, the first part of the talk uh, through those bullet points there related with mobile optimizations and, and best practices. This will be the first uh, part of the talk, and then Rafael will, uh, will tell us how he applied in his game, Laila's Tale, uh, all the best practices and, and some of the recommendations we, we do to uh, uh, make the most of our uh, GPU and, and get our uh, game running uh, really good on, on the hardware. And at the end, I will do some quick wrap up. So let's start with the uh, GPU budget processing, um, processing budget. And it is something really important uh, because if uh, big game studios, ha they have a, a well-tuned pipeline to uh, plan their game based on the uh, hardware and, 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 and the GPU processing budget, I couldn't say the same for indie developers. In many of the uh, game uh, events where I have been uh, doing uh, booth duty, uh, the standard question is, oh, I got this kind of problem with my performance, how can I do it? How can I improve it? My first question is always, are you familiar with the profiling tools? Are you familiar with the GPU processing budget? The point is that we can't ask the GPU to make more than it can deliver. It's as simple as that. And how we can, uh, how we can know about uh, what, uh, the, 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 about, the G, uh, about how much the, uh, the GPU can deliver? So it is the processing budget. So I will, I will show you today how we can calculate the processing budget and how we can, hand, uh, how we can use the Mali Graphic Debugger or any other tool that, uh, other tool that you can um, download from uh, our website to uh, measure in real time the uh, cycle count your application is consuming and then compare with the budget and know uh, if we are on or over the budget. So what is the, the, the GPU budget? So the, the GPU is a processor which runs at some uh, um, operating uh, frequency. Let's take, for example, the Samsung Galaxy S7, um, which is coming with our ARM Mali GPU with 12 cores. Each core runs at 60, uh, 650 megahertz. It means that each core can process, can perform 650 millions of single cycle operations, or the half of uh, two cycle operations. I mean, the, the GPU operation can consume one cycle or more, never less than a, than a cycle. So if we, if we multiply by 12 the, um, the uh, frequency of, uh, of the single core, we will get the total amount of cycle uh, the GPU can perform in one second. But we are interested in knowing that amount of cycle, but not in a second, but in a frame. So what we do is, at some point, we need to define as a, our uh, frame target of the hour game. We need to define if our game will run at 30 FPS or 60 FPS. We are talking here about VR, so we need 60 FPS steady. Um, so we divide that amount of, um, uh, amount of cycles per second by the uh, FPS number, so to know how many um, cycles per second, our, per, how many cycles per frame our, our GPU can, can deliver. Uh, we need also to define uh, our target resolution because it will define the amount of pixels uh, our shader, our um, GPU will process. When the GPU is a parallel processor that will execute the, sh the shader um, uh, on, the, uh, on all the pixels. So the higher the resolution, the more processing um, power we are using or we are demanding from the GPU. So we know, for example, that our target resolution is a full HD. Uh, we got uh, around 2 millions of uh, pixels. So we need to divide the amount of 
to the total cycle uh, that can deliver the GPU per second, we need to divide by the uh, number of frames, the FPS we got, and by the number of pixels. And in this case, it gives us 33 cycles per frame per pixel. What, what does it mean? It means that this is the maximum we can ask to the GPU to achieve 60 FPS steady on our game running with that resolution. If, we, if our shaders consume more cycles than that budget, it means that our game won't achieve 60 FPS. The math is there simple. When you are, when you are thinking about buying a car, you just do some math and say, oh, can I achieve this? Can I, uh, can I uh, assume that, uh, uh, that car, I mean, that amount of money? If you don't have it, you can make a, ask for a loan in the bank. The good news is in the GPU, we can, uh, you, we can calculate the, the budget. The bad news is that we can load additional uh, power processing from the GPU. The GPU delivers what it can deliver. Not a single cycle more. We can ask and we can consume more cycles, but we pay a price for that. And the price will be that our game won't achieve steady the 60 FPS we target when planning the game. So those are the formulas, simple formulas that we need to use when calculating our GPU uh, fragment and vertex cycle. For the, for the vertex cycle, for, uh, for the GPU vertex uh, budget, we divide uh, by the uh, number of vertices. So at this point, okay, what is the next step? So we need to know uh, at, what is the amount of cycles our application is consuming when running on the device? And this is where the malleographic debugger comes to the rescue. The malleographic debugger is a debugger that can tell us a lot of information uh, about uh, what is happening on the GPU. All the info related with each draw call, what, uh, the, the textures, um, everything, the frame, the frame buffers. But what we are interested here now by the way, you can, you can download for free from, from the website. The, 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 um, the, uh, the address is there. But we are interested here in a feature that malleographic debugger um, uh, in the number of cycle, the, 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 the malleographic debugger will uh, uh, would give it to us. But before, before going to that point, I, will, I, I would like to tell you that uh, this year in collaboration with Unity, we uh, integrated um, the malleographic debugger into Unity, so now it is really very easy and straightforward to build in Unity, uh, Unity application with support for malleographic debugger. All we need to do is first play, um, uh, drag and drop at the library, that library um, into our game in that uh, folder, in that path. That library is provided by the MGD installer when you download and install in your uh, desktop. Uh, then you build your application, but you need to tick the development build option. Why? Because this tells Unity to package that library into the APK. And this is the intersection library. It's the library that intersects every API call and look, of, uh, look for the, all the info related with this call and present to us in the uh, MGD. Uh, the rest is your, you install your application on the device, you connect the device over USB with your, um, to the desktop, uh, there is a, uh, a button to connect to the device that check the device. If the device is connected, just connect to the device. And you launch your application on the device, you start tracing uh, the, call, the API calls on the device and collected all the info from each frame. And uh, this is for open uh, application that um, uses the, um, they use the open GLES, um, um, but for Vulkan, it's just the same. It's practically the same. It only use uh, a different uh, library that is supplied again by the installer, and uh, you place it in a different uh, path in your, in your project. But it's just the same uh, steps. So the MGD will tell us the number of cycles per frame, the total kind of cycle per frame, uh, related with the fragment shaders and with the vertex shaders. Not only that, it will tell per shader, which is the total amount of cycles each shader accumulative uh, um, uh, is consuming in that frame, and 
like a static cone of that shader, no, of, of, uh, of uh, a static cone of cycle, of cycle of that shader. So, but the important info, the important info is in the green um, rectangle. So we got there the total amount of cycle from the fragment, uh, all fragment shaders and all vertex shaders. What we need to do is just use the formula, this time with real data from our app. So we divide by the number of pixels, and we divide by the number of vertices, and those are the figures we get. The next step is, for, we get that for this uh, specific case of that resolution and that number of vertices. We get a figure. The next step is, which is the, uh, what is the next step? Just to compare that figure with our GPU budget. If we are under, if our figures are below the, 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 uh, the budget we have calculated, we are fine. It means that we can even do more. We can make a little more, or more depending on of, of the difference uh, between the real uh, cycle consumption and the, and the, and the, um, um, and the budget. Uh, we can add more complexity to our shaders. We can, make, uh, we can add more effects, but what happened, and this is the most common uh, use case, what happened if we are over budget? So it means we are asking to the GPU more than it can deliver to achieve the FPS, the target FPS, under the condition, on the resolution condition we have used to make the calculations. Um, so we need to simplify our shaders. But where to start? Which shader we need to pick? Because it is not the same to pick one shader or another. So MGD will order there the shaders according to the amount of cycles they are consuming in the frame. And we need to go at the top of that list and start working with those shaders. If we pick one of the shaders in the, in the bottom, any change we do there we won't have any impact on the performance, on the total uh, count of cycles. So we start simplifying and start working with the shaders at the top of the, of the list. So I, I strongly recommend to use this um, um, system to approach, this approach to when planning your game, but only when, during all the development stage and share with the developers of your team and especially with the artist, which is always coming with, oh, this, look at this nice effect. But when we add that, that nice effect, that effect that we are just dreaming all, all the night about, then we see the FPS drop to the half. So if we share that info with the artist and we say to the artist, just come to me with that idea when that idea is on budget. And then I think you will, you will have more time to do the things you really want to do. Am I right or not? <laughs> So let's see now uh, another important feature uh, in, in the, uh, which we need to consider in, when developing VR applications. It is a single parse of rendering that has been available in the, the latest um, version of Unity. Um, and in this, this, is the, this is the pipeline the, which is associated with the, the classical multipass state of rendering. So we, uh, perform a number of operations per eye for the left, left eye and for the right eye. And at the end, when we got both uh, um, images of re the rendering, final render image, we, um, we blend, um, we merge all both to get the final image which is presented in the headset to, uh, in front of us. Uh, it means that we are practically executing twice the same operation, just with a little difference of the uh, point of view. Of the, of the position uh, of the camera, just with a little um, uh, shift. But we are doing practically the same. Here is where the so-called multi-view extension in mobile, the multi-view extension um, comes to the rescue and help us uh, because with this extension, we can issue a single draw call to the driver and uh, the, our GPU will render the both view with just a single draw call. So we can save the half of the draw call we are issuing to the driver. And this is important because the CPU needs some time to process that draw call. And it will release the GPU 
uh, it will reduce the load on the GPU and the, that will be available to, to, for other tasks our game needs to, to do in, on the GPU. So now the pipeline for the single pass state of rendering is, is the below one. So how, how uh, and this is how the a vertex shader uh, using, that use uh, the, the single pass state of rendering looks. This is a very simple shader, but they just want to illustrate that we need to pass to the shader um, an array of matrices, uh, the, the uh, transformation matrices, the M M MVP, the, multi, um, um, uh, the transformation matrices two in this case, but there are cases where we want to handle four views uh, because, for example, if we are thinking about Fovita rendering, uh, we need to use four views. But in this case, we, we only think about two views, one view per eye. Um, we need to, uh, I mean, we define the number of views, and there is a, um, a single uh, instruction. There is an instruction in, in orange, which is uh, the only instruction in, in the vertex shader that it is executed as many times as the number of views. The rest of the instructions in the vertex shader will be executed once. It means the load on the vertex processing will also be reduced when we use the, um, the single pass uh, state of rendering in Unity. Uh, and this is some, the result of some research we performed at ARM when um, comparing the load on the CPU uh, using single pass stereo rendering and multi pass stereo rendering. And what we can see there is as we increase the number of draw calls, the load on the CPU in comparison with the, um, the load on the CPU in the case of the single pass stereo rendering uh, reduced almost to, uh, there is a 50, 55, uh, 55%, almost to the half. So, it is all important because we are issuing less, less, no, less draw calls, so that we are relieving uh, the CPU from, uh, from half of the task. And the results when looking at the GPU vertex load is, is, is uh, more or less the same. As we increase the number of draw calls, the load on the vertex processing is reduced almost to the half. So we know that the single, uh, the single pass state of rendering halves the number of draw calls. We know that it reduced the load on the vertex processing, and also it reduced the bandwidth, the usage of bandwidth. Why? Because we are sending less data to the, uh, to the GPU. There is less traffic of data between the main memory and the GPU. So we know, we know all that. And this, this is the reason I want also to look at the what those, those facts tell me that, hmm, it could be possible that when using the single pass state of rendering, uh, we use less power because we are using less bandwidth. So last week, we finished the, some uh, power measurements uh, on the APK that Rafael prepared from Lila's uh, tail. And the result is that when we, we use uh, the single pass state of rendering, the power consumption of the application reduced up to 10%. And this is, this is not bad because 10% is a significant. I'm a physicist, and in physics, everything that it is, is uh, every effect that is uh, in the order of 10%, you need to consider. You can't neglect. And for us, it's important because we are talking on, 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 on mobile gaming, where the battery the life is really important. That 10% give us some extra time, some extra playing time, and or we can decide also to make our game more complex and more appealing uh, for the players. No. It's up to us, but we got that uh, gain in, uh, in, in, in the reduction of the power consumption. Uh, so the message here is very simple. Tick in Unity, the um, single pass stereo rendering option. Why? Because all these advantages. So and, uh, let's, let's have a look now at the, um, some of the most important mobile VR best practices we, we recommend to, uh, to developers. The first is related with multi-sample anti-aliasing. ARM GPUs, the cost of, of activating, of, uh, of using the four-time multi-sampling anti-aliasing in ARM Mali GPUs is practically, neg 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 we can't neglect it, no? We can't neglect. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very low, so the impact of, of that, of multi-sampling anti-aliasing on the performance uh, because of the architecture of, 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 of the GPU. So we strongly recommend in Unity to tick that box. But I will say more, and it, was some, uh, and it is something that I was trying um, last week. I, I will explain, um, because I personally hate when you are uh, looking at your VR application and start the pixel just pumping up 
and the specular uh, just it is something that happened in front, just in front of our eyes, and it's just distracting. It's, 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 I really don't like that. So I was, I was preparing a, a demo that I will just mention at the end, and I wanted to, to get that demo perfect, I mean, from a quality point of view. And what I did is I activated the eight-time multi-sampling antaliasing, and I was surprised with the result of that. First of all, because, I mean, you know that there are two types of, uh, of aliasing problems. The spatial one related with, uh, related with the, uh, the classical uh, aliasing problems that we can solve with multi-sampling and aliasing, and the temporal one, because we are, we, we are, run, we are not rendering uh, with enough um, um, frequency, and sometimes we, we, we see some specular popping up uh, because we are not able to, to, render, to render a higher frequency. Um, and this is a real problem. But if we activate a, a, a time multi-sampling and aliasing, it not only solve the spatial aliasing problem and, and, and you, you can see, you are not able to see anything, but it also reduce considerable the uh, temporal aliasing. And I was really surprised about that. And this is why I also recommend just to enable a time multi-sampling and aliasing on Mali GPUs because it only can, can be done on Mali, our Mali GPUs. It has a cost, but the point is that if you keep in control you are poly count, you will keep in control also the uh, impact of the a, a, a time multi-sampling antaliasing on the performance of your game, and you will get a super high quality uh, on, on, the, on the final image you've rendered. So at least I recommend to activate that and see the results. And if you are happy with what would you get, then if, if it has a bigger impact, uh, some impact on the performance, then try to reduce your poly count. It's my personal recommendation. We recommend strongly to use AESTC. The AESTC provides a number of choices to uh, um, compress the texture for, for objects which are farther away from the camera, so we can uh, apply a higher compression ratio because we are not interested in high quality. For objects that are closer to the camera, we, we can um, use a, uh, less compression ratio and achieve a bigger, um, a higher quality. And finally, um, we also recommend to use uh, mobile-friendly rendering techniques. We are, we are used to import from, uh, from desktop uh, the same rendering technique to mobile, and this is, this is not acceptable because we, are, we have limited resources on, on our mobile. I, I, in my team, we have developed several rendering techniques which are really mobile-friendly, and I have been talking about them in, in previous um, uh, Unite. I will just list them here which are shadow based on local cube maps, reflection and refraction based on local cube maps. Those, those techniques have the big advantages that they are faster than traditional rendering techniques, for example, the uh, shadow mapping. They are resource saving because they use half of the bandwidth. They just use read, read, they read only from the, from the cube map the, the, um, the texture uh, every time. Um, only they, they are only one read operation while, for example, in the um, uh, shadow mapping, you need to render to a texture, copy to a texture, and then read. So this technique halves the bandwidth, so it is important because it saves resources, it saves battery, uh, and also the quality is higher because as you are reading uh, all the time from the same cube map, you, you won't see any pixel flickering in the shadows or in the reflections. Uh, so the recommendation here is when possible use rendering techniques based on local cube maps and when combined with uh, traditional rendering techniques you can, uh, they, you can achieve higher quality at low cost. This is an example of the shadows based on local cube maps and you can see there how we can control the softness of the shadows. No? We can make the shadows um, harder or softer. Those, the techniques based on local cube map allow us to achieve this kind of really nice effect. This is another uh, example of reflection based on local cube maps. We are combining here reflection based on local cube map with reflections rendered at runtime time with using a mirror camera. Um, and we are combining them in a single shader, and you can see the result there. So the last thing, new big feature coming to VR. We can expect that the next year to have Vulcan in VR, and we can expect from Vulcan in VR the same benefits we already, uh, we already see, we already see in non-VR applications. So Vulcan 
will help in lowering the load on the CPU because the driver is, is a lot of more simpler. Um, and we can expect to make um, uh, a more efficient use of the multi-core architecture of the, of, of the mobile phone. Uh, uh, um, even nowadays, even the middle range phones come with four cores uh, and Vulcan can make a very efficient use of the multi-core architecture. And finally, is the inside out mobile tracking in VR. Maybe some of you have visited our booth. Raise the hand who visited our booth today or during this day. So probably you've seen the demo I was showing there of, of uh, inside out tracking um, in VR. Using the Google AI core in Unity for the uh, uh, running on the Samsung um, S8 with the uh, Arm Mali uh, G71 GPU. This demo um, is running at 60 FPS steady, running with uh, out, uh, inside out tracking and with eight time multi sampling and taliasing. What I want to show with this demo, and it is a pity that we, we leave today uh, just after the, the but maybe, maybe we got some time to show at the, at the booth, I don't know. Um, you can see how it is, um, uh, we can achieve all that on the ARM Mali GPUs. Tracking plus high, super high quality running at uh, steady FPS 60, that is what we need in VR. Uh, we also, uh, I also performed just recently um, the same inside out tracking using um, the Tango SDK on the Asus um, AR, uh, AR same phone uh, because it is the first phone that support uh, um, Daydream and, and Tango. So now, right now, we got two different phones where we can implement um, inside out tracking. Why inside out tracking is, is, um, is important? Because it opens a completely new type, I mean, to developers, the door to a completely new type of game. So I'm pretty sure that uh, if you uh, start thinking about, uh, if you experience with inside out tracking, you will, um, you will come to the really nice ideas and you will be able to produce a new type of different new uh, games. Um, in the next days, uh, I wrote a blog where I described step by step how to achieve both types, uh, both, um, in, in, in both cases using the Google AR SDK and the um, Tango SDK. Uh, I wrote a blog and, and we are talking with Unity to uh, make it available to, for developers in using the Unity channels. I mean, not, uh, um, we will publish in, in the R website, but we want uh, to, um, for all the Unity developers to, to make it available so you can experience with it. So now I will um, uh, hand over to um, um, Rafael, and he will talk about their experience in developing the Lila Tale. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you, Arm, as well, for the opportunity to be here talking about our game. So where are you going to, uh, I am Rafael Ferrari. I am from Schoolfish, and we are from Brazil. Uh, what I'm going to show here is how all techniques Roberto showed today was applied on our game. So uh, I will use Lila Tale, this is our main game. I will let you a uh, small trailer to understand a little bit more about the, the gameplay. So this is the gameplay uh, of our game. So let's see how the GPU budget was planning on the beginning. Uh, when we start to planning this game, uh, what do we want? We want a really beautiful game, first of all, and with a lot of colors and uh, um, a lot of colors running on Gear VR. We also want uh, the gameplay that you don't need actually to keep your hands up and tapping, uh, because when we started, was, uh, we don't have the controls. Uh, the, the gear, gear VR controls, and we, if you play without the Gear VR controls, you shouldn't be keeping uh, your, your hands up. 
And we also want a lot of colors on the, uh, on the scenario. So we want to change the colors, and each level is going to have a lot of different colors, right? And the most important thing, it needs to be really smooth. Uh, 60 frames per second and four times anti-alias at least. So that was our, uh, our main target on the beginning. And for us, the optimization starts on the first day. <laughs> you cannot op optimize your game in two weeks on the, on the, on the final of the deliveries. So we start on the beginning. So created this level editor. The level editor basically makes us uh, iterate faster. Uh, we remove the dependence of the game designers and the programmers, so we create the tool and the game designers or whatever, uh, the people on my team, they can just create levels and tests without any dependence. Uh, and it's much easier right now. So let's, I, I'll just show you right now how we create those levels. We first start painting the level into the mode. Uh, we are using like a, a simple program for uh, tiles. Then we read this, those tiles and those objects and we start to create in, in, in Unity. So we have all those tiles and we create it and then we add the objects as well. After that, we get all the, those tiles and we bend around the, the camera and we make the lines and we have all the, the calculation to, to make sure the distance is correct and all these kind of things. And after everything is done, we bake all the meshes because this way we improve a lot the draw calls and it's like a lot of meshes here. So right now after the, the batch, we have like just four meshes on each row. And on the, the end thing is that we adjust the heights to make sure you don't have any space between the lines. So that way uh, the people are not uh, gonna to see any, anything beside the, 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 the scenario. So uh, as I, I, I was telling you, uh, we could reduce a lot of the draw calls without the, our tools. Uh, we had like 120 draw, uh, batches, and now we had 20 batches for each level. It's really, really low right now. Uh, for the lights on the beginning that we want to create, we are basically using almost just light map and some shaders uh, as well, custom shaders. But this is, for example, our light map of this level. So if you remove the texture, you can see properly the light. So we are basically using just light map to, to make all the light that you saw. We just have one real-time light that is on the, our main character that has a custom shader as well. So let's see how our game performs on Malligraph's debugger. All the information are provided by Roberto and Arm. So here we are using a, a seven on the beginning, and our target is six frames per second, and we have a, a 600,000 uh, of vertex on the scene. So our cycle right now here, it's 30, it's 30, our budget is 30 cycle per frame, our, sorry, our fragment cycle, uh, it's uh, 30, 30, 35 cycles, and our vertex budget is uh, 194. So on our game, this is using MGD that Roberto just told you. We have on our fragment uh, shader, frag fragment budget, we have just 11 cycles. We can use like almost uh, the whole thing yet. So we are really improved on that, on it. So this way we can uh, go deeper on, on meshes or on, on effects and on other parts too. Uh, our vertex uh, fragments uh, budget here, it's really good too. It's just uh, eight cycle and our budget uh, it's uh, 30, 30 cycles per frame. So we still have a lot of things to improve if you want to, to improve here. So this is good because we can uh, keep the frame height really good and in a good position. So I will show the difference on our game of uh, single pass and multi pass stereo render. So uh, on multi pass we had like a, uh, one, one million and a half vert, vertex and a hundred and a half draw calls. With single pass this is almost half. So this is why you guys should use this on your game. It's really really good and was uh, really is, is really really helping us to make it uh, stable. Uh, I will show a, a quick uh, example here on uh, uh, anti-alias. So our game, if, if you remove anti-alias of our game, for example, you can see all the pixels, but uh, with two times you can see a little bit now, and we are using actually four times uh, anti-alias uh, on this example. Actually, our game is running eight times. We can, we can do it right now, uh, but uh, we do, I don't have the image right now, but we, we can do it. It's, it's running. So I will pass to Roberto again. 
so we can uh, wrap up this uh, talk. Thanks, Rafael. Just Thank a you. quick wrap up. Just a quick wrap up and um, uh, plan your game using the GPU processing budget. Uh, update to Unity 2 um, um, benefit from MGD integration, another um, single pass that rendering another feature that uh, latest Unity version provides. Improve your VR performance by using the multi-sampling anti-aliasing ASTC and use mobile-friendly rendering techniques. Um, we, need, uh, we need to keep the, the, uh, our eyes looking at the, uh, to the next year where we expect Vulkan to come to VR with its benefits and uh, inside our mobile tracking is already a reality. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. I don't know. I don't know if there is time for questions. Yeah. Do we have any time for questions? No. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, you, you can grab me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we we will be outside if if there is any question, please. Thank, thank you. you.